Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Micromana with Reverend Esty of New Birth Ministries. God bless you. Sit back, grab your tablets, your pencils, and your writing utensils to see what God has to say to you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Ancient of days, God is good. God has always been around. Hallelujah. He created all things. Hallelujah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Yahweh, Abba, our Father. We praise you, Father God. We thank you for today. Hallelujah. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to praise you every time we open up our eyes, every time we wake up. Baruch Hashem. We bless you, Lord. We bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord God, our creator of the universe. Some people worship the universe. We worship the creator of the universe. We know better. We thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, your power. Hallelujah. Everybody that's on here today, Lord God, I pray for them. I pray for all of our friends, our family, our neighbors, our health, our finances, our jobs. Hallelujah. Certain situations that people are in, and and they feel like they're fighting every day of their life. There's always something happening every time they wake up their eyes. Lord God, Holy Spirit, show us something in this word today that we can beat those Goliaths. Those Goliaths have already been beaten. Hallelujah. And give everybody the power that they need, the courage that they need to use the power that you've already given them. Actually, hallelujah. And we thank you for it, Lord God. All the prayer requests that we receive, we give them to you. Fill us with the power of the Holy Ghost today. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, everybody. God bless you for coming on today. Uh, if you want to write, to get grab your pens and pencils and writing utensils for real, for real. So when the Holy Spirit shows you something, you can write it down. And you don't have to say, well, I can't remember. It's so good. I, I can't remember what the Lord said to me. Well, write it down and you'll be able to go back. Amen. Because I'm just preaching the word to you under the power of the Holy Ghost. And when he speaks to you personally, okay, you want to remember what God showed you or said to you. Amen. So let's turn our swords to 1 Chronicles chapter 20. Amen. Praise the Lord for everybody that's on here. I see you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Chronicles chapter 20. And I entitled this Prepare. For Goliath's family. Now, some of you know about this, but then there's some who's going to listen to this who aren't going to know about this. But there was more than just Goliath. Everybody's so used to hearing the story about David and Goliath. David beat Goliath. David, they don't understand why David had five smooth stones. Amen. David was a giant slayer, and so are you. This is not just a story in the Bible. God put this here so that you would know who you are and what somebody else went through to win. Amen. Hallelujah. We have the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus to win. So therefore you will win everything that tries to come up, every giant that tries to come up against you. Hallelujah. Everywhere David went, he had to fight. You're not the only one. Amen. Every single place uh, uh, David went, (laughs) he had to fight. Are you? Is this happening to you? Hallelujah. Do you kill your giants that approach you or do you allow them to just take over your mind, your thoughts, your camp? Because you don't think you're strong enough to do that. I can't do this by myself. That's the problem. Because you're trying to do it by yourself. We have to do it with Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. One third of the heavenly kingdom who sent another third down to you. Jesus and God, the Father, sitting up in heaven. The Holy Spirit's inside of you. You can do this. Amen. You can do it. No matter what comes to your mind. Crazy. Did you ever have a crazy thought come to your mind? And you're like, ooh, that was, where'd that come from? That was ugly. Yeah, it was. 
That's the enemy <clears throat> whispering into your mind, hoping that you will catch on to that and run with it. The Bible tells us to hold on, catch on to the word of God and run with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Who is in your camp? I remember when I was in the Marine Corps, we had something called the fire watch. And that everybody took their turn while everybody else was sleeping. One of us had to stay up at night with our rifle over our shoulder and then walk around and guard those who were sleeping. And sometimes the, the captain or, or whoever, the gunny sergeant or whoever sergeant would come in on purpose, like three or four o'clock in the morning, and they would test you to see if you would handle it properly. The first thing that we had to do was say, halt, who goes there? And they would have to answer. If it's proper, they, if somebody from the camp get it, they would answer. And if they didn't answer, we knew we had a problem. So whenever something comes to you in your mind, just do the halt who goes there. No, you are not of God. You're not allowed in my mind. Leave me alone in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't give the enemy power over you in any kind of way. The enemies of David should have actually known David's reputation as a warrior. And, and, and they should have left the king alone, but they didn't. Your enemies are not going to have pity on you. Your enemies are not going to leave you alone. This doesn't mean you have to walk around and be mean all day long <laughs> and expecting evil things. To, I mean, you're expecting bad all the time, negativity. And we have to watch TV, radio, YouTube, all that kind of stuff, Facebook, all in places, LinkedIn, whoever. We have to be careful because I'm noticing that negative stories are so easy to see nowadays, amen? And if you don't watch, you'll go into a depression. You'll let the enemy oppress you. Halt who goes there. Amen. Is it of God? Save it. If it's not of God, stop it. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Your enemy should know that you have a reputation as a warrior as well. Does your enemy know? I'll put it that way. Does your enemy know that you have the reputation of a warrior? Okay, what is your enemy? What would what, what would your enemy think of you the way you handle things? Amen. What's happening is the enemy was missing the anointing David had on him. Amen. That's how he works. That's how the devil works each and every day. Diabolos, he's called Diablos, they call it in, in Spanish people. He nudges constantly grinding, nudging. Constant, as the word says, incessant badgering. You know, you have a good day on Monday, then all of a sudden something weird happens, and you pray about it or whatever you handle it the way you got to handle it, and then everything's fine, you go to bed, and then Tuesday comes, and oh my goodness, something else has, didn't I just go through something on Monday? Why today? Well, all I have to ask is, who do we think we are that we're not supposed to go through it? Badgering, okay? The devil continues, as Paul said, he had a thorn in his side, my friend, and you are going to have thorns in your side as well. It's the devil's job. He is going to make sure that he harasses all of the children of God, every one of us. Nobody's going to get left out. It, it, that is all he is about, ruining people. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Look up, write this down, Mastix, M-A-S-T-I-X. And in your strongest concordance, it's number 3146, amen? Ego, M-A-S-T-I-G-O-O, -O. okay? It means to whip, to scourge, to flog, to beat, constant badgering. And this is what he does in different ways. The devil badgers in different ways. Now, when you get a chance, write this man's name down, Benny Johnson from YouTube. Okay, he has a very good channel. He keeps up on things. And he showed a video. I saw this video. Blew my mind. There are people at a demonstration uh, at an abortion clinic. And there's a person, something, standing there that looks like a person. And they're saying, the title was, was there a demon at the abortion rally? And they focused in, the, the guy from TV who, who made the video, focused in on this thing, this person, the face was distorted, 
The hair started halfway back of the head. It looked like a wig. And they had a horrible face. Everybody else, everybody else's face was clear there. This thing was um, not clear. It was like misty. It, it, it didn't come in like everything else was. And they're saying it was a demon. He, he got up as close as he could to the face. And the demon the eyes sparkled a little bit. And he turned his head. He didn't like to be caught on camera. He, he he was actually, at the, these demons show up at these things. Abortion claims, we know abortion is wrong. They're there. Demons are there. Sometimes you can see them. Sometimes you can't. And, and get this. And then on in the video, they show the doctor. A lady was interviewing the doctor real quick on, on the uh, camera. And she called him out. He came out of the building. And she said, how do you feel about killing babies? Do you understand this is wrong? God doesn't like this. And the demon manifested in the doctor and he starts speaking. He starts growling at her and yelling at her. And it was weird. I saw it with my own eye. I'm telling you, demons are manifesting. We're having problems with the sun. I used to wake up in the morning and I said, good morning, sunshine. God bless you. Thank you for being here for us. Make today pretty, you know, and, you know, and now you're, we're hiding from the sun. And I'm wondering how many people are hiding from the S-O-N as well, not just the S-U-N. Now is not the time to crawl under rocks, folks. We got to beat these giants. They're manifesting. People are seeing this stuff. They're seeing things in their yards and everything and making videos of it. And those are not aliens, my dear. Those are demons. The, nowhere in the Bible, no matter what version you read, well, of course, nowadays, <laughs> before, no matter what version you read before the 20,000, I mean, 2,000, whatever, okay, but it, it says nothing about aliens. Alien is in there, but that's not how it's meant to use. It's meant as people who are from far away, a different place than what you, the, the country that we're discussing at that time. And this is what the devil, and now, no so. So write down, you already wrote Mastigoo, M-A-S-T-I-G-O-O, -O, constant badgering. And write down no sos, N-O-S-O-S. -O now, some of you wonder why you go through health problems, sickness, disease, physical limitation. It's demonic. It's demonic, no matter what, no matter what people say, you know, some people say, yes, yeah, some things happen naturally, of course, because we have a body, but the majority of it, folks, is demonic. God does not want you to suffer. He doesn't want, he doesn't want his children. To, would you watch your children? Would you want your children to suffer? Amen. Would you want your children to suffer disease or physical problems? No. If you're a good father, good mother, you wouldn't want to see it. Some people have reoccurring sicknesses, okay? They were healed. They might go through a healing. It's some kind of event or something, and they go through a healing, and the next thing you know, it comes back. Seen that before. That's demonic. That's a giant. Sicknesses. Amen. We have to stay in prayer, folks. Hallelujah. Now, verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 21. I mean, chapter 20, there's only eight verses. Chapter 20. Yeah, there's only eight verses. And it says, in verse one, and it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time that kings go out to battle, write that down, at the time that kings go out to battle, see, there's times you're going to battle. <laughs> to everything, there is a season. Amen. Ecclesiastes. Amen. Joab Forth, uh, led forth the power of the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon, that's the enemy, Israel's enemy, and came and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem and Joab smote Rabbah and destroyed it. There is a time that they, had, that they went out to war. Okay, here we have three overthrows of the Philistines. There are sieges. In the springtime, y'all, that time was springtime, right when everything is supposed to be fresh and new and green and lovely and good smelling, evil comes and you got to go to war. Did you get that just now? Amen. Just when you think you're supposed to have a good time, beautiful time, the things are supposed to go smooth, hell comes. Amen. And makes you fight. 
in the spirit. Don't fight in the flesh. Fight in the spirit. It's better. It's stronger. It works better. And, and David didn't play tently winks with his enemies. And neither did he invite them into the camp like Bain Hezekiah did in 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 12 and 13. You can write that down. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 12 and 13. Watch what Hezekiah, King Hezekiah did. Don't ever repeat that. Amen. Amen's not a good word. And Rabbah, their chief cities of the country. Amen was Jordan's capital. And we see, we notice how Israel and Jordan don't get along on TV and the news and everything. You might, some of you might know the story. Okay. Now, Milcom, M-I-L-C-O-M and Molech are known as little G's, the gods of Amon. These people did not worship God Almighty, Jehovah, Yahweh. They worshiped little G's. They were weak people. Weak people will always get defeated. You won't get defeated because you, you have Jesus. He's your God. Amen. The people, they were called Ammonites. Now, what are Ammonites? Any member of an ancient Semitic people whose principal city was Rabbath Ammon, which is Palestine. Okay. We know that word. Amen. Even in Ohio, People were saying Palestine, Palestine, but Ohio got messed up by that train. Amen. Hallelujah. And we keep them in prayer. We know God is going to help those people, just like he's going to help everybody today, helping us every time we wake up, okay? We know Palestine and Israel do not get along to this day, and they argue over the land. They're known to be more of a predatory tribe. That's not good. They hired, were they, they're known, you might have heard the story, where they hired Balaam to curse Israel. They moved from place to place. They worshipped Ammon as their chief, G-O-D, little g. They showed no kindness to Israel when passing through their territory. How many people right now in your life show you no kindness and you have no idea why they don't like you? You have no idea why they won't at least try to get along with you. Like the man said years ago, can't we all just get along? No, they just do not like you. Why? It's in their blood not to. Either we operate by Jesus, people operate by Jesus' blood, or they operate by the devil. Amen. And as long as you are a Jesus believer, there are just some folks, some Goliaths out there that are not going to like you. And get this, it says when they're passing through Israel's territory, they still don't like them. There are people who move by you. There are people who work with you. There are people, watch this, will even go to church with you and still don't like you. It's not your fault. Amen. How many Ammonites do we have in our lives who show us no kindness, no sympathy? And, and get this. How many are relatives, y'all? How many are relatives? Ammonites were very closely related to Israel in blood and language. They're relatives. To this day, they're related. Who are your Ammonites, who do you have, oh my God, Jesus, in your family who does not get along with you, no matter whether you're right or wrong, they don't like you when you're, definitely don't like you when you're wrong and still don't like you when you're right. Who are your Ammonites? David. David was an excellent warrior to where he would conquer and take the king's crown and place it on his head. Let's look at uh, verse two. And it says, and David took the crown of the, their king, their king from, from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold. That's a lot of gold. And there were precious stones in it. And it was set upon David's head. And he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city. Kings, leaders have a heavy anointing on them. Amen. Heavy, gold, and precious stones, along with much spoil from the city. Listen, the crown weighed about, listen to this, 75 pounds. 
can you can you wear a 75 pound crown that's the size of a child amen but guess what you might might have a hard time wearing it physically but you sure can do it in the spirit amen the holy ghost will help you carry that crown my friend hallelujah allow him to help you carry the crown amen and verse three uh and he brought out the people that were in it and cut them with saws and with harrows of iron and with axes. Even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon, Ammon, and David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Now, when you see this, it's talking about the horrors of war. Yes, there's going to be some deaths in war. But the main thing it's talking about here, this not only means that David killed the people and cut, and cut them to pieces, but he reduced them to slavery. They were no longer the same. He reduced them to slavery. Like Israel was, was a very wonderful, beautiful people. Amen. And every time they got caught by other countries, other, other leaders, they reduced Israel from the beautiful place that they were in to slavery. Now, the complete Jewish Bible says, by David Stern, in case you're interested, you can get it on Amazon. <laughs> okay, it says that he set them to work with saws, irons, and axes. Amen. Amen. Verse four says, and it came to pass. No, it keeps saying, and it came to pass. That's God letting you know as you're reading this, these things really happened. That, and this is what happened first. This is what happened second. This is what happened third. This is what happened next. Okay, and then verse four says, and it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Shebekai, the Huthanite, slew Sippai, that was of the children of the giant, of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. Amen. There arose a war at Gezer. I, you know, when I hear that, I always think about the term that people use, old Gezer. He's an old Gezer. <laughs> Amen. Okay, with the Philistines. And Sebekai killed a Sippai that was of the giants. See? Of the, there was more than one. There was more than just Goliath. That's why little David had five smooth stones, because Goliath had brothers. David didn't have five in case he missed four times. Amen. Hallelujah. With Jesus, folks, we get it right the first time. New Testament. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No stones. Amen. New Testament. With Jesus, you get it right the first time. Amen. And I would tell you the names that I have uh, researched and found of the brothers. Be knob. Two words. I-S-H-B-I, and then B-E-N-O-B, -E Goliath, of course, then Saph, S-A-P-H, Lemmy, L-E-H-M-I, uh, and you'll find him in First Chronicles. Uh, he was considered the Lord of the Philistines. Uh, you'll see that uh, sentence in Joshua chapter 13, verse 3, and uh, write down Second uh, Samuel chapter 21, Verses 15 to 22. Amen. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel 17. Let's, let's go to 1 Samuel 17. I just want to read this to you better than trying to read my notes. Verses 38. Okay. All right. Make sure I'm going to write place. And David, moreover, the Lord delivered me out of the... Okay. Okay, verse 38. It says, and Saul armed David with his armor. This is the king at that time before David became king. And Saul armed David with his armor and put on a helmet of brass upon his head. And he also armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword. See what I'm saying about have a strong concordance? You can go in and find out what M-A-I-L meant at that time. Amen. And David girded his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I can't wear these. I have not proved them. And David put them on him. They didn't fit him right. Amen. They weren't tailored to his size. Amen. 
and he took his staff in his, in, in, in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even a script and a sling in his hand. And the Philistine came out and drew near David and uh, the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. This is how the enemy sees you. He knows you're good looking. He knows God has blessed you. He knows you have the anointing on you. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to mess with you anyhow, out of jealousy anyway. Amen. Okay. You're good looking. God says you, my child, are good looking. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Verse 43 says, and the Philistine said unto David, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? which is bored, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Hallelujah. He cursed him by his gods. Amen. Staves are wooden planks. He told David to come to him so that he could give his flesh to the birds and the beasts of the field. Amen. And David, I'll go on. I says, um, Am I a dog? And verse 44 says, and the Philistine said to him, David, come to me and I'll give thy flesh into the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And then David said to the Philistine, thou comes to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, here we go, right to circle this. This is David's promise to the giant. Make promises to the giant that you will defeat them okay no matter who they are what they are how they come to you make promises my friend this day will the lord deliver thee out into my hand and i will smite thee and take thine head from thee and i will give the carcass of the host to the philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a god in israel now notice what the enemy did he, the devil always tries to beat you. He always tries to beat God. That's why you got to watch out when you ask the Lord for a mate, because the devil sent the wrong one. He always tries to, notice that the, the Philistine said, uh, uh, I'll, I'll take your flesh and give it to the, the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. He just had to beat him. So David came and made his promise and said, I'll give your flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Amen. And this is the devil knows that you have the answer in Christ Jesus. David knew that one who curses God should be stoned to death according to the law. If you study the word at all, you will see that a person that curses God was to be stoned. He knew what he was doing. My question is, why didn't Saul? See, now you see why God chose David as a king? Why wasn't Saul? Anyhow, he knew that there was no supernatural protection around the giant, so he had to die by the law. Stoning. Amen. Now, you don't go by the law today. You don't have to stone anybody today, but you are allowed to use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ because he's your best friend and he said you could. Jesus is the key. And gave it to you, gave you the key, him. He gave himself to us. The giant was entirely covered by armor, except for a slot above his eyes on his forehead. Now, the Septuagint explains in verse 49 that the stone passed through and sank in his forehead. The historian Diodorus wrote that people in war then could sling stones with so much force they could break helmets and shields, guys. And barely miss. David had the right weapon. He didn't need an Uzi. He didn't need an M16. Oh, just give him a stone. A smooth stone. David didn't stun the giant as some people say he did. He fulfilled his own prediction. Note, he never stunned the giant. Double note, and you... Don't stun your giants either. Don't hold them off. You know how people say, hold them off. Don't you hold off your giants. Eradicate them. I'm telling you now, in the name of Jesus, eradicate those.
spiritual giants that no matter how they come to you in the name of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus, with the power that is in you, the Holy Ghost, amen. The giants had six fingers and six toes, all right? Your giants may appear to have more than you, but how are they using it? They may be bigger than you, richer than you. They may think they're better than you. They may have better positions than you. They may live in a better place than you. But are they glorifying God with it as you would? For the greater good, are they using it for the greater good? Or are they using it, my friend, just to intimidate you? That's something to think about. Slay your giants. Amen. That doesn't go around. That doesn't mean you have to go around looking crazy and, and, and rebuking everything. I know people do that too. You know, you can live your life. But just in the spirit, discern when evil is coming up against you and your household or you and your anything. Amen. Are you saved? Thank you, Jesus, for the word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us today. Are you saved? If you're not saved. All you have to do is just say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I apologize for everything I've ever done against you. And I accept you as my Savior. I believe you died on the cross and came back three, three days later. And, and I thank you for doing that work. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Amen. And as you said that, angels are celebrating in heaven. God is smiling upon you. He erased everything off of your board. The Bible says he took your sins. And then through as far as the east is from the west, they're gone. They're gone. You're free. This is not the credit company. You're free. Amen. Your, your slate is wiped clean. Start all over, but start right. God says, be ye holy for I am holy. Change your ways. It doesn't mean you have to dress a certain way or well, just don't dress tacky. You know, change your ways. Act the way and dress the way the, you would if you were in the company of Jesus Christ in the, fit, in the flesh, in the physical. Amen. Change your mouth. Change your habits. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't do the same things you used to. There's a cleansing. You're justified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May God give you his grace. Be graceful unto you. And, and be merciful, give you his mercy, hallelujah. And when people listen to you, may they hear something different. May they hear, I think they are saved. They sound different. May they hear something different. And when they look at you, may they see something different. May they see the God in you. Reverend Essie signing off, God bless you. To God be the glory for the things he has done. And I love you. Amen. <laughs>